So we've now proven there is a much longer report. I'll take you through an abbreviated report now, and we can then talk through how that sort of, uh, what that sort of means and, and the interpretations from that. So the point of doing community research is essentially to identify the community's priorities and, the point, and understand levels of satisfaction they have with council delivery across a range of different areas. The point of doing this independently and using a community, using a telephone methodology is to make sure that we're not just listening to the people who opt in, but rather getting a broad understanding and measure of the community overall. To do this, we do a telephone survey where we use electronic white pages, sample pages, which include mobile phone numbers, and also we do something called number harvesting, where we put an interviewer in town centres to collect the contact details of respondents so we can actually ensure they can take part. This guarantees that we get a good reflection of the broader demographics of the area and not just people who have an established landline household. This is something we use across, the, um, across New South Wales and it's sort of standard practice across Australia for any sort of community research for local government. We use something called, um, we also use uh, a scales of from not at all satisfied, not at all important, all the way through degrees of importance. Um, so you'll be seeing some data here today. I'll have percentages where I talk about top, top two box, which will mean satisfied, or sort of very important or important. I'll talk top three, which is moderately satisfied through to very satisfied. And we'll also talk about, um, and also show something called mean scores, which are out of five. So the, the closer to five, the closer they are to being a priority or the closer they are to being providing a high level of satisfaction. Our sample size is 400 which is, uh, gives us an error rate of something called a standard error rate of plus or minus 5% at 50% confidence, which means 19 times out of 20, we should see the same results unless, of course, there's been a significant change. And I will be talking about the significant changes. We've been measuring this data for a number of years, so there is some things to see here. In terms of uh, when we conducted the survey, the survey was conducted as a point in time in February of this year. Once we collect our sample with my interviewing my call centre on the central coast, we then weight the data, aggregate the data, and to ensure that it's reflective of the community. We can see here that with the data we've collected, uh, that the majority of population have lived here for many years, although we do have a cohort that have been here for uh, about 15% of people have been moved here in the, last, in the last five years. So it's a reasonable sort of cohort of the community. I'm going to take you through the detailed findings now. So first of all, What's the best thing about living in Windsor Caribbee? Well, you all know that because you all live here, but essentially when we talk to the community, it's about the open space, the natural environment, uh, the friendly community. We've seen certainly natural, natural environment and open space improve over the last two years since 2019, possibly due to COVID, which is something that happens, we've seen across many local governments in the same period. So these are the sort of things that people enjoy most. We've seen country lifestyle has slightly declined. This was an open-ended response, so this is not something we had coding. We've then coded it post uh, collecting the data, data set. The next slide I'm going to show you talks about community priorities. This is a, again another open-ended question to give us an understanding about where the community, what the community focus, want council to focus on moving into the future. Now we certainly see that maintaining improving roads is up. This is an open-ended response as I said. Roads often is code as well, so it's not just always about the condition of the roads, but it's often code for increased congestion, traffic management, increased population, and we certainly, when we qualitatively explore this in other council areas, that's been the case as well. And that would probably fit with the next couple of points there. We could talk about development and infrastructure development, how they're fitting, and this is certainly something we see across council areas like, like yourselves. We see similar sort of data sets, probably a little bit more extreme in Wallandilly, where it is that how do we balance that population growth, development, how do we, how do we match that all to what, what was the traditional values of, of, of the area? So you know, this is change happening. Okay, so that's the key level sort of piece. Now I'm going to take you through how we rate council servicing. We're going to understand where the priorities are and, uh, and where the council performance fits in that. So first of all, We'll talk just briefly, well not briefly, I'll go through these slides, but we'll talk about council image. And we can see the council image has significantly declined since 2019. We've got now I think 25% of people saying that the, the council's got a, a good to very good image and that was 40% back in 2019. That's well and truly down on the previous data. It's also well below our benchmarks. Our benchmark score for images is 60% uh, is good to ex excellent and we're at 25%, so well down on that. 
When you talk about overall satisfaction, overall satisfaction is one of the key measures we like to see as a barometer of performance or healthy performance of an organisation. Um, what we've seen here is we've seen that satisfaction has certainly, again, it's significantly declined over the period. It's well below our benchmarks. Three years ago, we had 77% of the population saying they were moderately to very satisfied. That's dropped down to 65%, but more, probably more enlightening is the fact that those who were saying they're not at all or not very satisfied has gone up from 23% up to, to 35%. So nearly a third of the population gave the council a score of one or two out of five. This aligns again with what we see with Council communications. Council communications at 79% uh, previously, and now it's at 68%. Communications, as has been alluded to in some of the conversations earlier today, are a really important part of how we create those relationships and generate trust with the community. So that's something which I'll show you a bit later about how that sort of fits into the bigger picture of where Council's performance ratings are at the moment. The next slide down demonstrates probably where, where we are at the moment, or uh, well, where we were in February, certainly. Um, so we've seen a significant dip in satisfaction with the performance of councillors overall. Basically, that's gone down from uh, what, what was only a third was saying, no, not at all, or not very satisfied. It's gone to 51% of the community now saying they're not very or not at all satisfied with the performance of councillors. Um, we can certainly see the younger age group there, slightly higher mean score there, so they're still below a three, which is a, a level of moderate. And overall, we can see that also the older residents are the least likely to say they're satisfied with the current levels of performance. Most of these, you can see they're cascading down from the satisfied to somewhat satisfied down to the not very or not at all satisfied, and that's been true across the last few slides I've taken you through. So that's at a holistic level, a top level sort of the organisational health. We're now going to go through some of the things that have changed over the last period, notwithstanding the fact that all these measures I've just talked about have been significantly changed over the last two years. Um, we'll then talk about what are the other set council services that have changed in, over that time. Now, we had 43 different service areas where we asked people to say, how important is this to you? And if they give it a, a four or a five, so very important or important, we then ask them their level of satisfaction with that area. What we're seeing now is what has changed over the period. We can see there's been a higher level of importance. Uh, is the community is now a high level of priority for domestic garbage collection, green waste collection, the performance and maintenance of local parks, and the cleanliness and functionality of public toilets. Those have all significantly improved over, or increased in importance or as a priority to the community over the past two years. Uh, certainly what we've found is that it has been parks, has been something we've seen across most of New South Wales councils. There's been a significant uplift in how important it is because people have been forced to spend more time in public space. And so we've seen that certainly as, as strengthening over there. In terms of satisfaction, there's actually been a, two areas where we've seen a significant increase in community satisfaction from the ratings, and that is with town drinking water quality and also with encouraging recycling. Again, those, these are areas which are significant changes. In terms of where we've seen declines, well, we've seen declines across all the other barometer measures which I talked about earlier, the KPIs, but in terms of actually infrastructure delivery, uh, we've got the condition of local roads has significantly declined over the past two years in terms of satisfaction there. Um, we've also seen providing adequate drainage has significantly declined. I think we came after a, a we conducted this just after a rain event, which is not surprising. And I think the rain event also impacts the ratings of pools as well, because I know one of the particular pools is impacted by rain events. So <laughs> at least the data sort of makes sense. OK. Let's talk about the top five and bottom five in terms of what's providing importance and satisfaction. In terms of... I'm going to get this right just as we finish, aren't I? OK. Ah, oh, good, thank you. <laughs> Where should I be pointing? <laughs> okay. okay. All right. So in terms of what's important to the community, well, 94% of residents say the condition of local roads are important or very, very important. So this is a priority. And we see town water quality is at 92%. Uh, sorry, 
the availability or reliability of town water is 92, as is drinking water. It's certainly one of those issues which, uh, and not until you have water, do you realise that it's a, it's, a, it's a third world problem to have. You need to have your water, obviously. Domestic collection is, um, is at 94%, and litter controls and rubbish dumping are at 92% in terms of what people say is important, very important to them. The lower slide there talks about lower levels of importance, and I think we say, I say lower levels of importance instead of low importance, because if 60% of people are saying something's important, you can hardly say that's a niche area. We see dog controls, supports for arts and culture, are both at 60% in terms of people saying it's important or very important to them. Uh, festivals and events is at 63%. The revitalisation of the town and, and village centres is two thirds at 67%. The protection of heritage values, and also the provision and maintenance of community trail, uh, community trails and facility, uh, halls and facilities. So these are all areas where people say, even though we're relatively lower levels of importance, they're still important to the community. So none of these things are unimportant, you can see. In terms of um, what's driving higher levels of satisfaction, 95% of residents are at least moderately satisfied with town water, 92 with the domestic garbage collection, sewage systems at 92, town drinking water quality, and libraries round that out as being an, another area of high scores of, in terms of um, satisfaction. Lower levels of satisfaction revolve completely around, well, roads, decision-making, engagement, uh, development, parking would fit into a development component as well, um, and growth. These are all that have relatively low levels of satisfaction. Um, interesting though, with the roads, at 31% of people giving it a score of moderately to good, I've seen significantly worse in my travels. Recently, I saw Byron Council last year had, I think, 17% of people saying they're satisfied with the or moderately satisfied with the condition of roads. So there, it, it, there, there could, some of those scores could be worse. Um, okay, so I'm just going to look at the, the data with, within relevance to itself, just to show the data another way. Um, this is called performance gap analysis. I've simplified this just to show the top 10, I think, in terms of where the gap is. What we look for is we always expect a gap between what's important and satisfaction because there's the ideal and the experience. That's, that happens. But it's important to just see how things score here. And we can see the biggest gap there occurs with roads. 94% of people say it's important to them and only 31% say they're at least moderately satisfied. Then we round out with development, car parking local transport management, like traffic management, footpaths, so getting around the area. We've got development, information, community engagement, etc. And we've got drainage and youth rounding, rounding the top ones out there. Anything over 25% is an area where you'd want to explore, well, how high a priority is it and what level of satisfaction we're providing to see are these opportunity areas we should be focusing on. When we look at that within realms of the quadrants, we can see here Oh, we probably can't see here, but what this does show is that we've got um, four different quadrants in terms of what's important to people um, and how their levels of satisfaction work. Something that's usually in the improved quadrant would be roads. We can see here the development, growth, traffic management, round that out. In terms of the what's core strengths of the organisation, water quality, domestic garbage, these are areas in the maintain higher than average importance, higher than average satisfaction. In terms of those areas where low relative importance but high satisfaction, we've got things like libraries, uh, we've got uh, community facilities, festivals, events usually round that out. Those are the things about social capital or community would sort of make a place you'd like to live in, so sort of placemaking variables. And then we've got what we call niche, which are the areas where less of the population are saying it's important to them, but we're still, as I said before, significant levels of people. No one's saying any of the council servicing is unimportant. So these are all, not, not, we're seeing no sort of low-hanging fruit in terms of what's not important to your community. This is all what we call uh, stated analysis. So what we do is we look at the results and we've asked people to, how important is this to you, how satisfied. What we then do is we do something called regression analysis, which looks at the relationship between how people rate all these different service areas and how they rate their overall satisfaction with council performance. So if we have a sample size of 400 residents, I have approximately, and I've got 40 different variables, I have approximately 16,000 measures of satisfaction. What I then want to do is look at the relationship between how they've rated all those different areas and their overall satisfaction to see how much each of these areas contributes to overall satisfaction. 
What I show you on the next slide shows which are the areas which differentiate. So which are the areas that if you can strengthen people's satisfaction with council's performance in these areas, you'll strengthen council's overall, uh, people's community satisfaction with council's performance overall. Now I've run this regression, and again, this is sort of, it's a, it's a little bit of a confusing one. So what it means is that this is where your scores are now, and this is what's contributing the most. And we can see that if we add the top two things together, it's there, it's about information and engagement. These, that, that accounts for 20% of satisfaction. So if we can strengthen people's satisfaction there, they're the ones that move the, move the dial the most in terms of reasserting uh, council's performance, or reasserting confidence in council's performance. What we then have done is that this time around, I decided to add in a couple of different variables, particularly since the situation is, was, was unfolding as we were pulling the report together. So I decided to add in a few more. So at the moment, this explains 40% of the variance. If we add in communication, that suddenly takes away a lot of it, and we see 20% of the variance just from communication. Then we've got inform and participation, so about a third of satisfaction is driven by Communication and engagement, which is something that's been mentioned already in this session today. But then if I add in the performance of councillors, we can suddenly see that that's a significant contributor. And that sits there and that explains a lot more of the variance and certainly that's something which the community, obviously, that has impacted the community satisfaction scores. So essentially here, this is, sort of talks about the way the council performs and is, is perceived to perform are the key contributors to how people will see its performance, which is sort of to be expected in a way. It's how do you build relationships, how do you build transparency and trust. I'm just going to go through very quickly a summary of what I've said and then just some potential next steps or what we see as next steps based on the data that we've seen today um, and what we see across category. So again, uh, in terms of facilities and how facilities should work, people would rather have fewer, smaller facilities spread across the LG, oh, sorry, not, prefer to have more or well, lots of smaller facilities spread across the area uh, rather than having large centralised facilities. Um, in terms of the best things about the area, it is the natural environment, space, country, lifestyle, friendly community. In terms of the priorities that we ask people, they spontaneously talked about the issue, the roads, development, infrastructure and traffic management, all sort of code for that sort of growth which is a challenge in population, population terms. Just a reminder in terms of the satisfaction ratings with council, so 65% were somewhat satisfied, down from 77%, significantly below our norms and significantly below previous scores for council. Communications at 68%, that's down as well. Council image is 25% say it's good to excellence, so very low uh, compared to our norms. Um, satisfaction with council performance overall is 55 the key drivers revolve, again, around performance of councils, level of communication, provision of information and opportunity, and sort of opportunities to get in people involved, particularly to some of those conversations. And it's a good time to be reminded of this. We've got a community strategic plan coming up. Just in brief summary then, governments and engagement are the key drivers of satisfaction with the performance of council and people, the community's perceptions. Uh, top next steps, as far as we would see, would be Look, look to see where we can strengthen both those formal and informal methods of community engagement and communication and how do we strengthen those, how do we increase satisfaction with those. So that partly that would be going out to the community, understanding their expectations about the level, the type, the method, the issues that they want to be communicated with. And as I said before, you know, with the CSP coming up in the near future, um, the conversations around the long-term development of the area, how the area, how how council and how, how the planning is to mitigate against the challenges that development and population growth brings, what's being done and plan to offset uh, any changes there. That's essentially the summary. There's a lot more data, as I said, but that's uh, my five cents at the moment. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much for that. The 404 sample. Yes. Is that the norm for a council this size? Thereabouts. We usually do between 400 and 600 as a sample size. Mm. Um, we do some councils go very high, but for the most part, metropolitan councils mainly have a sample size of 600 and regional councils 400. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a focus on councillors. Yes. How can you differentiate between councillors and staff? We have, well, we do have had questions in other areas where we talk about that, but the difference would be those sa overall satisfaction scores. The overall satisfaction talks about the organisation as a whole. 
whereas the performance of councillors scores focuses just on the perceived performance of councillors. Because there's a difference there, that would be uh, part of that. We've also got some, I think we've got some contact, how contact was handled questions as well regarding customer service in the survey, but in terms mm. of brevity, I kept that short out in a second. Yeah, well, I, I, I might have a discussion with you later about customer service, because I take the view you cannot totally blame the councillors for the position this council is in. Oh, absolutely. The communication and engagement stuff that we see there would certainly indicate there's, there's potential for opportunities to develop any of those, all areas, both. It's not just the performance, it's the organisation as a whole. Mm. In, in, in saying that, I'm not suggesting they were doing a good job, uh, but you know, I, I just think that the staff uh, have to take some blame mm. um, for, you know, what, you know, for, for these results. Uh, and the new general manager will work on that. Um, okay, well, uh, thank you very much. I'll get it.